Welcome to Radio Arizona RV. This is Eric Stark, and we're going to be picking up the discussion on propane fittings and hoses and such. Episode number, this is episode number 23. Episode number 22 prior to this, we talked about replacing a propane regulator on a travel trailer or fifth wheel. Pretty basic stuff. Got into appliance fittings just briefly, but talked about safety. And on that note, always check for leaks when you're done working on your propane system. It's imperative you do that. Use a propane leak detector, something that sprays on, that creates bubbles. So if there's a leak, you'll be able to see it. Do not skip that step and do not rely on your nose to do that. Always double check. So as I was saying, episode number 22 concluded with appliance fittings that all your appliances in an RV, for the most part, like your refrigerator, stove, water heater, will have a 3 8 male flare fitting on it. That's pretty standard. It's common. It's one of the things you might be able to call standard on an RV. And it re- it's pretty simple. It's self-sealing. The line going to it will have a 3 8 female flare fitting on it. You don't have to use Teflon tape or any kind of sealant on that. So that's pretty straightforward. You don't use those a lot unless you're adding a catalytic heater or something like that to your, to your uh, propane system. And that's something you would do on the back of the refrigerator. You could tie in there. That's one of the common places because it's so easy to access. You'd use a 3 8 flared T in there. Then you'd have a, a new line running to your catalytic heater, probably with a propane hose or a propane shutoff on there. So if you need to shut it down completely, you can do that. And that's the most common way to do it. And that's typically where that 3 8 flared fitting is used. Um, some barbecues use that as well. Um, typically when a barbecue has that fitting on it, it doesn't have a regulator built into it. So your propane tank would have to have the regulator on it. There's all these little scenarios with propane fittings. And that's where my perspective is looking at this from people coming into the store, wanting to add something to their RV. They want to add a barbecue or they want to add an auxiliary tank, whatever it might be. And so there's all these fittings and ways of doing this. I'll have pictures of all these on our website to be able to see them and identify them. And I'm not going to get into every little detail here of what you can and can't do. That's not the point of this. It's more to give you some general knowledge. So if you decide you want to do something, you can do it with a little easier, a little less frustration. Sometimes when you, we don't know what we're describing, you know, we go to the store and, Hey, I want to do this to my RV. I want to add a propane fitting here so I can run my, my Coleman camp stove. Well, the parts guy is going to ask you some questions. Well, how do you want to attach it to your RV? Where, you know, what do you have a trailer fifth wheel? Does it already have something on there where you can do this? Like a quick, this quick disconnect fitting. They're going to ask you some questions and that's good that they do that. That's for your safety and also figuring out how to do this, how they're going to go about to do this. And there's almost always a way to, add appliances or another propane tank to the system, an auxiliary tank. It's just sometimes the fittings are expensive. They might be a $30 fitting, a $40 fitting, $50 fitting. And so the sticker shock sometimes might be a little much for you, but that's reality. That's how much they cost. These are brass fittings. They're precision fittings. And remember to always use high quality ones from companies that specialize in propane, that they don't specialize in other things like dish trainers and holding tank chemicals and door holders and things like that. Um, go to the guys that know what they're doing. People that specialize in it. So on a lot of, a lot of things that people want to add, or one of the most common, I should say is a, a Coleman style camp stove. And I say the brand because everybody knows what I'm talking about. It has the screw in bottles that you throw away when you're done using, you know, it has sometimes referred to as a, it's a throwaway bottle. So the fitting on there might be called a throwaway fitting, the fitting on the end of the bottle that comes made onto it. That's a one inch by 20 fitting. It's a kind of a fine thread fitting. And there's a male and female version of that. Nothing really anything else. They're uh, made with a, a threaded, they can either be made, into a propane hose with a barb fitting or it can be screwed into a propane hose. Um, quite often they're just made as part of the propane hose. So if you wanted to go from a, 
from a motor home and adapt in a, a Coleman style camp stove, you would need to have an adapter put on your RV that would be before the propane regulator on your motor home. It would have to be between the shutoff valve and the regulator. And the reason why is the Coleman camp stove is regulated. It has a regulator built into it. That's what the bottle screws into. So you would buy a, a brass fitting and you'd have a couple options of hooking it up. The most common and sensible way to do it is when it has uh, two different options, such as a one inch male fitting on it and a quarter inch inverted flared fitting on it, you'd want to use the one inch male because the quarter inch inverted flare fitting would be if you ever wanted to add another tank to that RV, you know, an auxiliary tank. So you would just have a propane hose made or you would buy one. We make them at our store and that's why I say that. I don't know if very many stores do, but we make them. We can make just about anything for an RV when it comes to a propane hose. And so the hose would have a, a one inch female fitting on one end, which would go to the adapter that's on the motor home between the regulator and the shutoff valve. Then the other inch would have a one inch male, or the other end would have a one inch male fitting on it, which would screw into the camp stove, whether it's Coleman or any other brand. And since the camp stove is regulated, you won't have any problems. You can turn it on and away you go. And always check those fittings for leaks. Those are, um, probably the least likely to leak because of the way they're made, but always check them just to make sure, you know, safety first, especially if you got an open flame right there at the stove. So that's a pretty simple hookup. And even with a propane tank, as I said, if you already have a motor home, you've bought that fitting that goes between the valve and the regulator. Almost all of them anymore come with the inverted flare on it. The female and quarter inch inverted flare fitting. So if you ever want to add an extra tank to it, you can just buy a propane hose, pretty much a standard propane hose, um, with a quarter inch inverted flare on one end and the tank that you buy will probably, or adding to it will probably have the Acme thread on it. So it's quarter inch inverted flare by Acme. Then you just choose the length you want five feet, six feet, seven feet. Don't get a small hose. Give yourself some room to move here. So these are working off a fitting that you can buy at an RV store. If they don't have it in stock, they can order it. This is all pretty common stuff. Now, maybe you have a travel trailer that um, you have a dual or a automatic switchover regulator. So you have dual tanks. Those are a little harder to tie into. Not the end of the world, though. Most of your trailers now have a quick disconnect fitting somewhere on it, generally in the front, where you can tie in other appliances to it. The only thing is you have to make sure your appliances are not regulated or determine if the quick connect fitting is um, after the regulator or before. My experiences are always after the regulator on your RV. So if you buy a, a uh, barbecue for it, the barbecue can't be regulated. If it's regulated, you'll have two regulators and the pressure will be way too low for it to work. Or if you're gonna add anything else to it, it can't be regulated. Now you wouldn't wanna use that to add an auxiliary tank to unless that tank was regulated. So it's important you understand that all your appliances have to be after a regulator, never before It'll be too much propane, too much pressure and is very dangerous. So always after, and if you accidentally have two regulators, that's better than having no regulators. Now you'll have to figure out how to remove one or, or change the position of the, the appliance where it is in the propane system. Not a big deal though. So all of these things are very simple. You have, just a handful of fittings. You have the quick disconnect fittings, which some of those come on hoses, but you have to make sure that fitting is going to work with the other end. There's a couple different brands of quick disconnect out there. And over the years, well, there's been more than a couple and they're not always interchangeable. It's kind of like air hose, quick disconnect fittings. They're not always interchangeable. So you want to make sure that one's going to work with the other. Sometimes you just have to buy the, the male portion and go home, make sure it fits in there. Okay. And it'll fit snug and tight. You'll be able to turn it, but you won't be able to shake it or anything. Then if that's it, you go back to the store. Okay. This is the quick disconnect and let's move forward and let's buy whatever we need to put on the rest of this thing. And if it doesn't work, the store will probably just give you your money back and maybe they have a different brand. You can try that, whichever. Um, 
Sometimes you just have to figure that out. And when you're, when you're working with the propane system or trying to add appliances, doing things like that, you know, if you can take pictures, everybody has a phone now that takes pictures. You know, if you can't bring the stuff to the store, bring them a picture, a couple pictures. Pictures are free. They cost you nothing. That way the, the parts guy can get an understanding what you're doing. I mean, sometimes you can sit there for 20 minutes talking to somebody and you have no clue what they're trying to explain. It, it's very tiring. And it takes time away from other customers. And then sometimes everybody's getting frustrated and, and nothing's going to get accomplished. And most of the time, the stuff isn't real cheap. It's going to be expensive, you know, or at least that's the perception I get from people. You know, you brass fitting that's $60 or $40. It's a lot of money, but it's something you can take with you. It's going to last, you know, you can move it from RV to RV or just sell it with the RV. And depending on what you go, if you have a motor home and you buy a trailer, you're probably not going to be able to take, not be able to take those fittings with you because they're not really going to be interchangeable. Not easily anyways. So just about anything can be added. It's just a matter of whether it's safe or not. And I hope this helps because the fittings are the thing that mess everybody up because they don't understand them. But there's always a way to do it. Um, very rarely have we been able not, but not been able to come up with a solution for somebody wanting to add an appliance. But that's us. We're different. We do make propane hoses. But most stores can, if they don't stock them, can at least order usually what you need. Might take a little bit longer, might not be as custom. The hose might be a little shorter than you want or a little longer than you want. But nonetheless, it can be done. And so, you know, give that thought. Um, there's also kits that can be purchased where it comes with the fitting and the hose. Um, I'm not a big fan of those because they're not always exactly what you want. You know, sometimes they're close, but not perfect, you know, and you still have to buy other things or maybe the hose is a lot longer than you want, you know? So if you can find all the stuff individually, you're probably better off dollar wise, probably doesn't make a big deal or a big difference. So I'm going to conclude here. I think this covers it in the two episodes, this and the previous one, there's a lot more to it. Um, you know, maybe when it comes to safety and things like that, checking your propane systems. So maybe that, that will require another episode. Um, I'm trying to just keep this simple though, for just going to the store and doing some basic things, making some purchases. And that's the point of all the podcasts that I do. You know, this isn't how to rebuild your RV from ground up. This is just giving you ideas on how to go about your project. When you go to the store, you can talk to the RV parts guy intelligently explain what you're trying to do. And that's how all the podcasts are. You know, it's just giving you the, the helpful information you need to get your project started and finished all the technical details. You know, you can ask the parts guy. Sometimes I include more than what you'll need. Sometimes maybe not as much, but you know, that's just the point of these they are short, they're sweet and they get the job done. So I want to thank you for listening to episode number 23, talking about propane hoses and fittings. Remember to always be safe. Make sure you double check for leaks, use bubbles, don't use a lighter, and don't use your nose. So this is Eric Stark with Radio Arizona RV.